the eye and the hand. And what is that? What, what is the eye and the hand? Let's see that again. Protection. Protection. What does that mean? Protection from death. Oh. The Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam declared, Inni la undiru. I'm going to warn you about the Dajjal. وَمَا مِن نَبِيًّا إِلَّا وَقَدْ أَنْذَرَهُ قَوْمَهُ Every prophet warned his people about the Antichrist, about Dajjal, the false messiah. وَلَكِنِّي سَأَقُولُ لَكُمْ فِيهِ قَوْلًا But I, I say to you something that none ever said before me. No prophet said it before him. The Antichrist sees with one eye. He has one eye. His left eye. He's blind in the right eye. He has one eye. Wa inna Allah laysa bi a'wa. He doesn't have one eye. You're God. This God has one eye. Why is there so much one eye symbolism amongst these entertainers? Have you ever seen anybody when you, you take a picture and he says, "Hold on, hold on." I've never seen any normal person do that. Why do they do this? Because this is their religion. They worship the, the, the one-eyed God. Horus, he's called in Crowley's mythology. Why are they preparing our children for one-eyed characters? Why? Why? The minions, they're actually called the minions in this film. Why are they doing this? Why do they all do these one-eyes? What, what's going on? Why are all their symbols with one eye? What's happening? And then the pyramid, because they believe in a pharaonic structure. They believe in an elite, and then everybody else, the masses that just follow them and do what they tell them. There are three dominant aspects to this Dajjal system. The first aspect is Fir'aun. Fir'auna, Hamana, Ujnuduhuma. Fir'aun, Haman, and his armies. The first aspect is Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the political system. The political system is the Freemasonic constitutional system of separation of religion, of any form of religion in the acts and decisions of the state system. In other words, morality is literally thrown out and Machiavellian principles are implemented. The principles based on efficiency and the benefit of the ruling elite. No other considerations are taken. If it means killing a lot of people, it means killing a lot of people. Now, that the first aspect, the political, embodied by the constitutional government, separation of religion and state, which is implemented now in the Muslim countries as well. The Turkish nation is democratic by nature. I have no doubt that the American nation which has gone so far in this ideal is Turkey's friend in her aims. Not later than May 16th next, a provisional Jewish government will commence to function in cooperation with the representatives of the United Nations then in Palestine. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions.
the important thing to remember with the Masons and the Founding Fathers is that many of the Founding Fathers were deists. So when you talk about the Founding Fathers, who believed in deism as opposed to theism? Almost all of them. Give me names. Uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams. Deists believe that a supreme being created the universe, but that being is impersonal. It won't answer your prayers or even hear them. There are a lot of people who say there is no proof, for example, that Thomas Jefferson was a Freemason. That is true, but certainly a deist. Thomas Jefferson went so far as to take the Holy Bible and remove all of the references to anything miraculous, uh, to the resurrection, to the virgin birth. Jefferson himself said that the idea of the virgin birth, Christ springing from a virgin, would one day seem as much like myth as the idea of Minerva springing from the head of Jupiter. There is a painting in the Capitol. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, it's a painting that I was shocked to find was there. I said there is a painting called the Apotheosis of Washington. Apotheosis meaning the God-making of Washington. George Washington becoming a God. It seemed almost irreverential. It was like, how can a man become a God? But it really, to my eye and, and to other historians' eye, catches this concept of the power of man. And again, can you imagine uh, anyone putting forth that notion of, of politicians as gods? Right. Here we are in the 21st century. Well, you'd be run out of town. You'd be run out of town. There was a statue of George Washington that sat in the Capitol. He was unclothed. It was a, a model of a statue of Zeus. It was George Washington as a god. Right. And that did get run out of the Capitol building. This is George Washington. Um, in the last century, they decided they didn't have a decent statue of George, so instead of getting an American to, to produce one, they ordered it from Italy, from Florence. And when it arrived on the dockside, uh, people were staggered, because here was George, the first president of the United States, depicted um, naked uh, from the waist up with this um, cloth over his Bill Clinton's, and then pointing up one arm, pointing down the other. What's going on? Unless you realize where these people are coming from, it's inexplicable. Well, if you just hold that in your mind, arm up, arm down, naked from the waist up, and then uh, Bill Clinton's covered in a piece of cloth, well, this is where it's coming from. This is the ancient depiction of the compilation of the negative force symbol that the Templars uh, worshipped, or the high-level uh, Templars worshipped anyway, um, called Baphomet. And this is why that they depicted um, uh, George Washington in that way. The, the next thing is the economic control. This is an absolute control. The one eye that is watching everything has complete control. The next thing is the military, which is Junud Huma, the armies of Pharaoh and Haman. The, the, they have to have an army. This, the United Nations in the attempt to create a world army that will literally police people in the same way like uh, Noam Chomsky has mentioned it becomes like a mafia protection agency. If you're not paying up, then they send the mafia in to break some arms, break some legs. This is what they do so that they have a, create a world army that will begin to do these things. The Prophet said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about Dajjal. That he would ride on a donkey. And the donkey would travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey would have his ears stretched out wide. The donkey will have his two ears stretched out wide. <laughs> A flying donkey with its ears stretched out wide? Now I think our artists over here tonight are going to have a field day with this symbolism. A flying donkey with his ears stretched out wide. I hope you don't get any problem with your government, eh? A flying donkey with his ears stretched out wide. The doll is going to fly, come flying on that donkey. My opinion 
which I hope you will share with me, is that that donkey is already here in the world. I have interpreted that donkey to be already here. Yes. When I come to Malaysia, I have to travel on that donkey. Yeah. I have to travel on that donkey every time I come to Malaysia. Hmm? This is religious symbolism with which we began the lecture. The donkey is the modern aircraft. And since the Antichrist brings with him the modern aircraft, the Antichrist commands the skies. You can't, you cannot compete with him or rival him in power in the skies above. And so Dajjal controls the sky. Because the flying donkey is not just a passenger aircraft. The flying donkey is also the fighter aircraft. He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water will reach him up to his knee. You designed a picture already? <laughs> the John is going to step in the ocean the jar is going to step into the ocean and the water will reach him to his knee. Protestant Islam, of course, is going to wait for a man who is tall enough so when he steps into the water, you will see the water reaching him up to his knee in the ocean. Again, I want to suggest to you that we are dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. But you and I know that this is symbolism. It represents the technology with which Dajjal is able to go down to the bottom of the ocean. The Antichrist would be jumping about between the heavens and the earth. Jumping about, said the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, I want to suggest to you that this is not to be interpreted literally, that we are dealing with religious symbolism. The Jal is going to jump between the Samawat and the earth, the skies and the earth, jumping up and down. You could be a very tall man to do that. If you're going to jump and your head is going to be in the sky, and you jump back down and your head, your feet on earth, I mean, you've got to be miles high as a human being to achieve that, huh? Well, then what does it mean? The jar is going to be jumping between the heavens and the earth. Answer, this is symbolism. The jar will have the technology with which to be able to go up and come down. It refers to our modern exploration of the heavens above. The satellites that go around the earth and the shuttle aircrafts that go up and down. The father of the space age. That's what he called. You know what he said? I'm not the father of the space age. That's the real father of the space age. Okay, now this guy who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. 
Okay, I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where's it all coming from? <laughs> We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anna, when and where and what, but this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. You know, but the, the technology, you study where all this technology comes from. Okay. You know, read about the magic and the enlightenment period. All these scientists were magicians. They were all into black magic. You read about uh, Francis Bacon. He, I, I just read a, a, a biography of Francis Bacon called Knowledge is Power. Magic and, and, and the creation of modern science. Francis Bacon was reading all these magical books. Uh, 2001 a Space Odyssey Arthur C. Clarke Arthur C. Clarke great technologist he actually uh, has some, most of the patents that enabled the satellites right if you look at his interview with BBC in 1961 where he predicts the internet he predicts uh, the cell phones he predicts uh, texting he said that by the year 2000, people are going to have handheld devices that enable to talk to anybody anywhere, right? Arthur C. Clarke said, and he has three laws of technology. One of his laws is no technology reaches a level of, of complexity except it becomes indistinguishable from magic. So 